Hi guys, Zach here with another Command and Conquer Red Alert video. In this game I'm playing a 3v3 match on the map Super Bridgehead. On my team is a player called Wooden and Ironside. And on our opposing team we've got Big Muscles, Happy Believer and Matt Tracker. I'm starting in the middle left position and you can see immediately I've moved my MCV to the right. And the reason I've done that is so that I can be closer to the yaw. If you just start from your starting position and build a power plant and barracks and then place your ore refinery, it's going to be located a long way from the yaw and gems, which means your ore trucks are going to waste a lot of time travelling to and from the yaw refinery. Looking around, I can see that there's no team directly below me and also my allies are in the spot a bit below that. So I don't have to worry about anything below me, so I'm going to have to be looking at defence of the north probably. I haven't seen any teams there, but I'm going to assume that they're probably located there. And we've got our blue player. He's just saying he doesn't understand uh, what we're saying when we were talking about our starting positions. I just put ML for middle left, and my teammate put BL for bottom left. Right, you can see um, Orange is located above us. That's Big Muscles, um, and we can see he's got some building work just there. He does look a bit left of his starting position, so I don't know whether he's trying to keep his base hidden and then possibly do a sneak attack early on, but it's not going to work probably. And you can see he's just sending some infantry in to try and scout me, and what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to uncover some of that shroud, just so he can't sneak down the left-hand side and then come from me at my MCV from there. Sometimes what players do is they send a line of infantry down the left-hand side, far left or far right, depending on the map, and hope the opponents don't spot it because often it's covered in shroud. So I'm just uncovering that so I can see what's going on. And we can see what Big Muscles has also got a war factory out as well. And what I'm doing now is I'm building an ore, ore truck, but I'm going straight to tanks. I'm only building one ore truck because my opponent's located so close. If my opponents had been further away, I would have gone for double ore truck and then gone to tanks. So I'm probably going to need to build an extra ore truck later on. Um, you can see he's pulling, pushing me a bit back at the moment. I was trying to pull my infantry back and um, sort of have a defensive position. But I've got some tanks out now, so I should be okay. I've also just built a precautionary pillbox um, to deal with any infantry. Because infantry can be quite troublesome for tanks if you can't squash them. Right, so I'm going straight for lights because they're quite easy to build. Um, quite funnily enough, we don't see any tanks around Big Bustle's space, which is a bit weird for now. Um, and yeah, and what I'm doing there is I'm just trying to direct my ore trucks just to mine some of the gems and just destroy the infantry there. Right, so I'm going to go and attack Big Muscle's base because I do need to deal with him quite quickly. And we can see, funnily enough, he's only got one ore truck and we don't see any tanks, which is a bit strange at the moment. So what we're going to do is going to get rid of that ore refinery and stop his ore collection. And this is quite a strange occurrence. Right, I'm uh, just building more ore refineries. And you can see he's got some infantry down there. So I'm going to need to deal with them right straight away. And we can see that Ironside has been defeated. So we've lost one of our teammates. And we can see now Big Muscles is bringing his tanks in. What I think Big Muscles has done is he's got, he, he has gone to attack Ironside and left his base unguarded. Which is quite strange because when you've got an opponent right below you, you don't really probably want to leave your base unguarded because they're just going to attack you. So that was a, probably a bit of a mistake by, well, they just defeated one of my teammates, but I, I think it was a little bit of a mistake probably. So what I'm doing now is I'm just place, placing some pillboxes around and trying to defend against big muscles. Light tanks are probably the best type of tank to defend in this type of situation because they do do a lot of damage and they're very, very mobile. So this is working out quite well for me. Um, their big muscles has only managed to get one power plant, which is really easily replaced. What you would need to do to do some real damage is either get my construction yard, one of my war factories. And this looks like it's pretty much over. He's got no ore. He can't build, and I think he's still got a construction yard, but he's probably out of ore because he already had one ore truck collecting. So that was a little bit of a hectic start, uh, early aggression by big muscles with infantry, but then he made the mistake of pulling his infantry out, which left his base unguarded. Right, so now we're going to need to see how our teammates are doing, so that's green, they're uh, wooden, and um, you can see he's got an extra MCV, so he's uh, gone for the multiple construction yard, and here is Cyan, and playing Cyan is Happy Believer, and you can see, like me, he's gone for light tanks early on. 
I am transitioning into medium tanks now though because they have a bit more HP and I do like them a bit better when it comes to tank battles. So you can see Happy Believer's pulling back. I think he got a bit caught around the cliffs there and that was stringing out his tanks which wasn't that good for defence. And you can see my teammate Wooden is asking for help so he's in trouble. And um, Problem is I am fighting with Happy Believer at the moment. So let's see, yeah, because it's Matt Tracker, the other opponent that we're fighting against. And what I'm going to probably try and do is actually go to Matt Tracker's base. That's probably the best option at the moment. Let's have a look what's going on. And it looks like my teammate Wooden is unfortunately, yeah, he's going to be destroyed. Um, so we're going to have to go to uh, Matt Tracker's base. That's the best option. Because by the time I get to my allies base, he will be defeated. And then we'll be fighting a tank battle over there. And it will be two on one because we've got Happy Believer there as well. So this is going to be, we're going to have to hope Happy Believer follows us. And we're going to go straight for his base. And let's hope his tanks, uh, he doesn't realise. Because he's got some tanks there. They're at the moment they're stationary, so he hasn't noticed us yet. And our opponent Wooden has been defeated now. So he's going to be aware pretty soon. So we'll try and destroy these bottom buildings first and then pull our tanks up to the top. You can see Happy Believers coming in from behind and it's just a question of can we survive, can our tanks survive this because we are going to need to be able to fight even if we do destroy this base because Happy Believer is there with his army. So we need to save as much as we can and Matt Track is now dead. So it's 1v1 now, me against Happy Believer. And I've got my radar dome down now, um, so I can see what's going on. I can see if Happy Believer brings any a small number of tanks from his base to attack me. And this is a battle here. It looks like I think Happy Believer might have the slight upper hand, but he's actually pulling his tanks up. And it's actually looking a bit better for me right now. Yeah, I think he lost quite a few tanks there when he tried to pull them through to group his tanks together. Um, but he seems to be getting the upper hand again, so I'm going to try and pull back for now. And I'm going to be constantly getting reinforcements from my base. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build another war factory. Because usually I would have built a third war factory at this time. But because I already built that single ore truck at the start, it has halted my economy and delayed it slightly. So I'm now getting my third war factory because you can see my economy is doing well at this moment. Right, um, I got a bit of bottlenecked there. And when you try and go through that bottleneck, it does... Uh, Makes it very hard for your tanks to get through and you do lose a lot and you see Happy Believer's doing the same thing. I think he's realising now he's pulling back. He's realising exactly the same as I did. When you try and go through that bottleneck, you are going to lose a lot. The problem is Happy Believer is on the better side. It's the side I want to be on um, so I can just get my tank reinforcements through there. You can see my reinforcements are coming up at the top. So he's going to get a bit sandwiched here hopefully. He has got some infantry as well which are a bit annoying. Um, I do have to need to try and squash him a little bit. Right, and it looks like I'm getting through and I'm doing okay here. He might have a slight number, but I am getting reinforcements all the time. So now I've got my third war factory down. I should be having a better supply of medium tanks. You can see that Happy Believers also went to medium tanks, and which is generally what people tend to do quite a lot. They go from lights and then to mediums. I'm just building, bringing those two tanks, I was going to bring those two tanks up there because you could see Happy Believer had sent three tanks um, for a little bit of a sneak attack. So I was just uh, getting a couple of tanks there but I never needed to. Right, and you can see uh, Happy Believer's pulling back but you can see he's getting reinforcements from his base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back a little bit as well and get reinforcements from mine. Building. Unit ready. So it's all out tank warfare at the moment. Now I've got, I think I've got slight numbers advantage here, maybe. But you can see that some of my tanks are on pretty low health. I don't know what, if Happy Believer's trying to bait me there to try and get me to try and go through that small back gap into his base. But uh, I'm going to take the fight out here. And I might have been a bit uh, fast there because um, you can see my tanks aren't as grouped as well as Happy Believer's was. And I did lose a little bit early on there. And you can see Happy Believer's getting constant supply from his base as well. And it does look quite tricky for me at the moment. I think Happy Believer's got the upper hand here. So I'm going to need to sort of like try and get to the other side and pull a bit back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back through those cliffs. And hopefully string out my opponent's tanks a little bit. 
And as you can see back at my base, I'm just constantly building our refineries. I need to keep that economy going. Right, so we're pulling them through, and you can see his tanks are getting strung out now, and this is actually working out quite well for me, I think, because my tanks are a bit more grouped than his, and I'm getting some good tank kills here, so I think it's working out quite well for me. That was probably a good move there. Also, I'm a bit closer to my base, so I'm getting a bit of a better supply of tanks. And now Happy Believer's trying to bulk, uh, get his tanks grouped together again. Up at the top. And we can see, I think now, the times, tides have turned. I think I have got the upper hand in terms of tank numbers. This is looking very, very good for me. And you can see Happy Believer's pulling to the left. Now, I don't know if he... I think he's probably, possibly going for a base, is he? Yes, he definitely is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send some tanks after him and I'm going to send my other tanks to his base. Because you can see his tank numbers have diminished significantly. Currently, this is looking very good for me. Even if he doesn't get into my base, I've also got some pillboxes for defence. And as we get to his base, we can see he's got no defences there whatsoever. And I think he's noticed now he's pulling his tanks back, but it's pretty much over at this point, I think. Um, it's just going to be a case of destroying his buildings. So in this match, I think the big thing was, was destroying my opponents, which were close to me early on. I had to go for that attack early on on big muscles. If I'd left it later until his medium tanks had got back, I would have been in big trouble. I also made, uh, made the choice to go for Matt Tracker's base, who was playing as red, and that was also a good choice. Happy Believer at that point, though, should have probably went to my base instead of following me to his allies' base. I know it's always nice to help your allies, but sometimes the best way you can help them is actually to attack your opponent's base rather than going to their base to provide support. And after I defeated Red, it was just then an all-out tank battle between me and Happy Believer, which was a pretty good. It was a pretty good tank battle. Uh, one of the best you get. You don't really get matches as close as this one has been. Right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.